Howdy, I'm Lee Wilson, and this is TGO Wyoming, on the move. And today, we're going to talk about armor, and why you should have it, why you might need it, and what kinds there are, and what on earth you would use it for, and why would you spend your hard-earned money on it. So I've been thinking about armor for a long time. Now, you can break armor down into three categories. Soft Kevlar armor, ceramic plate armor, and steel armor. So they all have their distinct advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to focus first on soft armor, which is what I'm looking at getting first. So Kevlar armor is generally rated up to 44 Magnum. So that means it can take a hit from a 44 Magnum and it will not penetrate the layers of Kevlar. There's a lot of good armor testing out on the internet. People shooting up soft Kevlar uh, plates and, man, they can just take some serious hits, some real serious hits. Of course, there's things to be considered when you get hit <laughs> with a 44 Mag, too other damage and trauma that can be induced. But the armor I'm looking at is made by AR500 Armor, and their Kevlar seems to have a pretty darn good reputation, it's affordable, and the lead times are not exorbitant, and they will sell to civilians. Some armor companies will not sell to you unless you are military or law enforcement. And <clears throat> of course, you know, you need to be aware of the legalities and. Uh, regulations as to where you live because some states and municipalities will actually you know regulate whether or not you can possess body armor um, but here in Wyoming man it, this is one of the last free states well free er states in the nation so armor is a good thing and armor is something we can own and have with us pretty much wherever we go and nobody really bats an eye so Kevlar armor is good for your handgun calibers, and for me that's really my primary concern is having it for home defense. You know, get a couple of nice Kevlar, um, you know, plates, I don't know what else to call them, they're Kevlar plates, and throw those in a small uh, armor carrier and keep that in the bedroom in case of home invasion. Now there may be situations where you don't have time to throw on your armor, if your home is being you know rushed or broken into <clears throat> but generally with the way that my house is laid out i will have a moment it, it'll take a hot minute for somebody to get in the house or who has gotten in the house to get back to where the bedrooms are and that'll give me ample time to just throw my arm through and uh slide on some kevlar and this offers me you know more protection that's what it's really about if you're in a home invasion scenario you don't know if he, uh, you know, the aggressor is armed or not. You don't know what they're armed with. Statistically speaking, it's most likely going to be a handgun. So, you know, if you have soft armor, that covers your bases there, and it covers soft armor covers your vitals, and that's what I'm concerned with. And so, I think that's going to be a really, you know, a solid improvement into my home defense situation. Because that way, I have my Glock 17 with the light on it, with my TLR 2S. And of course, soft armor. And on the top of the soft armor, you can put some spare magazines, although chances are you probably will not need those in a home invasion scenario, but you just never know. It's better to be prepared. And of course, I can keep an extra flashlight on the soft armor, on the carrier. And most importantly of all, a blowout kit in case things go really bad and I need it. So you should always have a blowout kit on any piece of gear that you are intending to use in a life or death situation. Then there's plates. Now, ceramic plates are great, but they're usually, you know, a limited lifespan. If you drop them, you can crack them and then they become less effective. They are generally the same weight or slightly lighter than steel plates, and they also contain the bullet fragments. They do not create spalling. Well, AR500 armor has created a very, very dense, almost like rhino lining cover uh, spray-on material that they put on their steel plates that captures the spalling. Again, there's a lot of really good resources and reviews on the internet that show you how the armor plates stand up to some very severe hits. And the ability to capture that spalling is really a good thing because the last thing you want is to get hit in the plate and then have shrapnel come up and jab you in the chin, the face, the eyes, arms, wherever it might go. That's just that's bad juju right there. So I'll start out with some soft Kevlar, try to get some of that here in the near future. I'm budgeting for it in my uh, preparedness budget and get myself a little carrier and eventually have myself a nice set of steel plates with the anti-spalling coating on there. So 
that's my reason for having armor. Now, if you work in an industry, uh, private security or anything like that, armor is also a really good thing to have. So any place where you might have a deadly force encounter, anything you can do to increase your survivability, in my opinion, is a great thing. There's lots of different carriers. Uh, main carrier I've been looking at is the Mayflower APC because it integrates really well with the HSP chest rig system. And that's eventually what I'd like to have for a grab and go kit. But again, big money, big money. Dun, 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 dun. Parked. So is armor necessary? Probably not. For the majority of people, it's not really, in my opinion, a necessity. It's not even a necessity for me, but it is something that I would like to have on hand to increase my survivability in the off chance that this might actually happen. Chances of having a home invasion, pretty low, really. I mean, where I live and everything, pretty low. The look at my house, it, you know, it's just not, it's not high up there. I'm more likely to get into an automobile accident than to have my home invaded. But just because the probability is low doesn't mean it's impossible. And that is an important thing to consider. Is that just because something is unlikely to happen doesn't mean it can't happen. Doesn't mean it won't happen. So I'd rather be prepared. And if I never use it and the Kevlar is old, enough, I have it long enough for it to get old and rot and crack and become brittle, awesome. That's peace of mind that I purchased and I'm okay with that. So that's kind of my attitude towards armor. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an investment, but my life is worth a few hundred dollars. I mean, it just, it just is. I'm pretty sure the wife and the munchkin would agree. Well, munchkin right now probably wouldn't agree because he's barely talking, but eventually he would agree with me. So do you guys have armor? What do you think of armor? Let me know in the comments below. So, you know, I'd like to see your thoughts on just civilians owning armor. You know, I don't live in a war zone. You probably don't either. And uh, it may seem a little excessive, but why not you know why why stop just like this close to having that next level of protection in your life so yeah that's pretty much it i intended this to be a short video it ain't but hopefully you guys have stuck with me through it and if you found this video entertaining and or educational please let me know and don't forget to comment share like and subscribe for more great videos and as always stay safe shoot straight and i'll see y'all next time